This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. More on that later. This is your sign to finally switch from Adobe Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. And yeah, it might be a small size, but don't judge the size of a book by the look of its cover. Okay. <laughs> okay, I could go on and on about all the reasons why you should switch from Premiere to Resolve, but if you're watching this video, you probably already know them. I definitely wouldn't consider myself a DaVinci expert or master at this point. I'm still putting in the hours myself, but my goal with this video is just to be able to help anybody out there who's wanting to make the switch and you just need to know the basics on how to get started in Resolve and not be super overwhelmed. That being said, just right off the bat, I'm gonna give you a quick list of things I will not be covering so you're not wasting your time. All right, that's my intro. Now let's frickin' do this thing. All right, let's open DaVinci frickin' Resolve. This can be intimidating, opening a new program, but we're just gonna keep it plain and simple, okay? Okay, so we're in DaVinci Resolve. Do not let this overwhelm you. I know it's probably a brand new interface. If you're coming from Premiere, it's just gonna look different. Basically, on the right here is your projects. This is gonna host all of the different videos you're editing. Within this projects area over here, you can right click and make folders. So if you wanted to make one for YouTube, and then you could make one for clients, let's say, to be simple with it. And then you could drag these into these folders, whatever, however you wanna organize those, that's great. So these are your projects and your projects are stored within a database, which is this little thing over here on the left. So this is your obviously local database. So basically, if you need to find where your project files are stored, you can right click on this and click reveal in finder. And this will show you where all of your little settings and shits are, okay? Projects, all this stuff. Cloud is a whole nother thing. That's what I do for my remote editing work for Matt. And that's a completely different video. If you're interested in that and how we cloud collaborate between three different countries, let me know. It's pretty sick, but it's for a different day. Just a quick little small tip here. If you get stuck inside of a folder and you wanna go back, you actually have to click on this projects thing here. It doesn't look like a button, but it is. So that took me a while to figure out how to get out of that. That's how you do it. And for the databases, if you wanna create another database, like if you want a database for your YouTube stuff, database for clients or whatever you want, you just add a new project library here and you can name it like poop sticks or really whatever you want that's professional. So if you want to save a project file separately, like not where you have your database set up to save project files, all you have to do is right click on a project and click export project. So that's gonna export a copy of your project file wherever you want. Another cool thing you can do within this project window here is if you want to archive an entire project with all the footage, music, everything, all you have to do is right click on it and then you can export a project archive and save that wherever you'd like, which I think is really cool that it just bundles the whole thing up as a package for cold storage or whatever you wanna do with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just open up a basic new project completely in the nude, no footage or anything, and I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff. So let's open a new project and let's just come up with a quick name like, <laughs> how we doing brothers? Something like that. Create. I know this can be overwhelming seeing a brand new interface. Maybe you've jumped into Resolve, maybe you haven't. So let's just start with the very basics. I'll give you a quick rundown of the tabs and then we'll start putting in some media. This is your media pool. So this is where you can store footage. I actually don't really use it that much. I'll show you why in a little bit. This is the cut page. I literally never touch this. I don't use it for my style of editing. So we're gonna move on from that one. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the edit tab. And this is where I spend like 95% of my time in DaVinci Resolve and it's beautiful. You can set it up like Premiere, which we're gonna do, but let's keep going. This is Fusion, it's probably gonna lock up my computer. Oh no, this is their equivalent of After Effects basically. I also don't really use this. I'm trying to learn it actually right now. I'm taking a course on it. So we're not gonna worry about it today. This is the color tab, which is so sick and it's one of the best reasons that you should switch to resolve because you'll get amazing color control over your footage, it's so sick, we'll get into that. This is Fairlight, which is like sound design stuff. I use it a little bit, not very much. We'll get into that later as well. And this is the Deliver tab, which is basically exporting, rendering, that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is import some media to start being able to make a little movie in Resolve, okay? So what I do is I click on my little finder 
And if you're wondering how I snap it like this to either side, I have the cinch plugin enabled. I, I bought that, it's really nifty. So I'm gonna click on my current drive and go into where I store all my videos. Let's grab media from my last video that I uploaded on this channel. I don't need thumbnails or exports, so I'm gonna select everything else that I would like to bring in. And basically, you could import it here in the media tab by dragging it into the master, but I pretty much live in the edit tab, and I'm just gonna drag it into this section over here. So I'm gonna grab these folders, drop them here, and what's cool about dragging it into this master section is it keeps everything organized exactly how you had it in your finder. Very convenient. Okay, so this would be the point in the edit where we would start, you know, dragging footage and making timelines and all that stuff. But before we do any of that, I wanna talk about keyboard shortcuts. We're gonna spend some time on this and I really think it's worth it because it speeds up your workflow. And this is where you can make Resolve feel a lot more like Premiere Pro. So if we click on DaVinci Resolve, go into keyboard customization, this is where things just get real juicy, ladies and gentlemen. It just, it gets beautiful, I can't lie. One of the greatest things Blackmagic has done is allowed for keyboard shortcut presets that are based on other editors. So these are all built in to Resolve, which is just the coolest thing ever. So if you need a solid starting point, like if you edit just the default settings in Premiere, you can just click on Adobe Premiere Pro and now your keyboard shortcuts are the exact same, which is so rad. Same for Final Cut, which is also over here. This little tyrant is slapping my toes right now. See ya. That's for you, Philip Bloom, love you. What I did when I first opened Resolve was click on this Adobe Premiere preset and then build it out how I had all my shortcuts in Premiere because I changed some things to make it my own, make things a little faster for myself and I'm stoked about that. So I went ahead and saved mine as Zach Premiere mode, which is great. And what's awesome is you can export presets you can export the Zach Premiere mode, which is exactly what I've done, and there's a link below in the description and the pinned comment for you to download mine for free if you're interested in learning those or you need a starting point. I'm gonna probably breeze through these relatively quickly because I don't want this video to be four hours long, but just try to stick with me. If you need to rewind or come back to this video, feel free. So the very first thing is I set tab to opening media pool. If I'm in the edit tab here and I'm done grabbing assets over here, I just hit tab and it just closes and opens media pool. So the next three all kind of work together. It's Q, W, and E. So basically Q is trimming the start of a clip. W is just splitting a clip, which is making a cut. And E is trimming the end of a clip. So if we just have a piece of footage in here, hit tab to get rid of our media pool. What you can do is go to timeline and then selection follows playhead. And what that will do is whenever you have clips in a sequence, Wherever your scrub is, that's where it selects the clips. It's pretty convenient, which is nice. So when I have that setting enabled, this is just like a particular way of editing that I do for longer takes. But what you can do is just drag this and then make cuts with W super fast, which is nice. Or if you want to trim all of the right side of a clip, hit E, and now it just got rid of all that footage, Command Z. Or if you wanna trim this beginning portion, hit Q which is nice, so it just chops that. Super convenient and it's just fast for like long A-roll takes for YouTube videos or interviews. Probably the most important editing function that I use a lot of the times is setting in and out points. It's a really quick way to select the shots you want and put them into your timeline quickly. So I set mine up to be I for in, O for out, and then comma to append to end of timeline. And basically all that means is when you hit comma, it's gonna take that select and slap it to the very end of your timeline. Okay, let's hit tab to open our media pool and let's say we're working in this talking head and we wanna cut out a section to put into our video. So we can find where we want it to start, hit I, where we want it to end, hit O, and then just hit comma to append it to the end of the timeline. I, O, and comma is just religiously how I edit my footage. It's how I drop all my B-roll selects in really fast. I really don't do it with A-roll. Typically for a long interview or A-roll clip, I'll drop it into the timeline as a whole and then chop up the pieces I want so I can see the audio waveforms better. But this is how I edit through other footage very quickly. And in support of the I-O comma functions are J, K, and L. So I have J set to play reverse, K set to stop, and L set to play forward. All that means is basically, if you don't wanna use your mouse and the in and out points to select things, you can just use your J, K, your J, K, and L clips to do this. So basically all you do is hit L to start moving forward, you can hit it again to go double time speed, and then you can hit K to stop, 
and then J to go backwards. And the more you touch these, the faster they go. So you could go forward with L, hit I to start the clip there, and then hit O comma to drop it in like that. So you don't even have to use your mouse that much. I typically use my mouse because I feel like I have better control if I can just lightly scrub, hit I, hit O, and then drop it in but there's times where I use either or. Another big shortcut for me is changing R to speed, which is super convenient if you're shooting in like 60 frames per second, 120 in a 24p timeline. So we have this beautiful iPhone clip here, which is really neat. And the way I'm zooming in on the timeline is by holding down option and using the scroll wheel on my mousey which is very convenient, makes things fast. And then if you wanna go left and right, you hold down command and use your scroll wheel as well. So just quick ways to get through your timeline. Back to the speed thing. If you wanna change the speed of a clip with that R shortcut, all you do is hit R and then there's your speed. So basically all you do is hit R, let's change it to 80, hit enter, and now it's 80% speed. Another important shortcut I have set for myself is setting X for ripple delete in the edit timeline. And, and if you notice, you can set keys to be different things in the different tabs, but we're just focusing on the edit tab right now. So in the edit timeline, ripple delete is set to X and I'll show you why. So if you want to close this gap here or this gap here, when you have X set to ripple delete, all you do is click in this gray space and hit X hit X and it just closes them. Or, you know, if you have snap turned on, which I have set to S, you can also just drag and click. And when you see that line show up, that means snap is turned on. Another cool thing about snap in resolve though, is while let's say snap is turned on, I'm gonna click down and hold on this clip and now I can move it around and it snaps obviously, but I can hit S while holding down on my mouse and it will turn snap off temporarily. So now let's say I want it to drag into this other clip. When I let go, you can see that snap turns back on. So you can use snap temporarily while holding on to media clips or audio files or anything. And it's really convenient if you need to do a quick slight adjustment, but you don't wanna turn snap on and off for the whole project. So those are my keyboard <laughs> shortcuts. Hopefully that makes sense. I know this is specific to how I edit. Maybe it will help some of you out there or maybe you wanna experiment with my shortcuts or maybe you can add to it and we can talk about it in the comments and come up with something even more efficient. Um, but those typically get me through an edit relatively quickly. I'm editing videos and turning them around pretty dang fast with this setup. Um, and I'm also very used to it because I did this in Premiere for years. So I hope that helped and now we can move on to other stuff. Now, let's say your computer isn't a super spiffy M3 MacBook 9. You can make proxies in Resolve by selecting all of your footage here. And if you want to view your footage a different way, you have these options here. So I selected it all and then you just right click and generate proxy media. It's pretty quick, does a good job. Once your proxies are made, all you do is click on playback and then proxy handling. You can prefer proxies and that will just tell Resolve to see the proxies or you can prefer the camera originals. And then similar to Premiere, once you go and export your video, it will export the full resolution media automatically. Now let's say you want to pull some B-roll to put on top of this track. So let's select this whole clip. If you grab the whole thing, it will pull the video and the audio, which is nifty. And you can pull it up here to put it on a different track or command Z, go back to this clip, double click. You can just pull the video or you can just pull the audio, which is very nice. So I'm just gonna pull this video and put it up there. Let's say you have a clip copied and you just wanna paste it above your A-roll. So let's copy this and then I'm just gonna delete it for the example, go back to the beginning. So if I click paste, you can see that it overlapped my A-roll, which I don't want. Personally, I like to have my A-roll intact in case I need to switch the edit up. So undo, command Z. What you wanna do is click on this little auto track selector thing. And then if you wanna make sure it doesn't paste on this one, you can disable this track selector. And then you can just paste all day without interrupting your A-roll, baby. So we wanna take this B-roll and copy it and then paste it above our A-roll to make our video. But guess what? I can't see my A-roll timeline. There's a way to see them both at the same time. Over here, this beautiful little button here is our timeline view options button. So we're gonna click this and then select this option, stacked timelines. And now you can see there's a little plus button over here. So we have our B-roll selects. You can change this to any timeline you want, or we can hit plus. Let's go to our main edit. And now we can just, you know, copy our B-roll, click to our main edit, which is super fast. Make sure this is selected and I'm gonna turn this off so it doesn't paste over any of the footage and audio we already have. Click paste and look at that. It automatically created a second track and we have our B-roll on top of our A-roll, which is so cool. So you can have a ton of timelines open at once and be pulling footage from like, media clips you downloaded or whatever and just pull it into your main edit super seamlessly. 
It's so great. Let's say you're in this project and you want to go back to that previous project menu to see all your videos. Like maybe you want to jump into another video to copy some footage and then come back into this one to paste it, which you can do. All you have to do to get back to your project is hit this home button here. This is your project manager. There's also a way to open multiple projects at once. If you right click in here and click dynamic project switching, then you can actually have two things open at once. So we're going to go dynamic project switching. I'm gonna open this one as well. There's some footage offline in here, don't worry about that. But now if you notice next to the project title, there's this little drop down arrow and I can go back to how we do in Brothers. So let's say I wanted to copy some footage from Sony Sucks. We would copy this, then we click the arrow, go to how we do in Brothers, and then you could paste that into here. Oh, I just have to zoom in, there it is. So now let's say our basic edit is laid down in the timeline. So we, you know, we have our A roll, our B roll, maybe our music and effects, that kind of stuff. So now I'm gonna show you guys a project that I have finished. This was the last video I uploaded to the channel, my Q and A video. So this is what my timeline ended up looking like. And honestly, to me, this is not super overwhelming. You know, I have my A roll here, my B roll here, a couple of graphics and photos on that top track. And then it's usually just a music track and then two sound effects tracks. It's very simple and it, you don't need to be overwhelmed by any means. So let's say this is the point that you're at. You have all your basics laid out like I do here, but now you wanna start making adjustments. So like, you know, maybe zooms, crops, audio gain, just little edits and changes within Resolve. That's what we're gonna talk about and we're gonna do all this within the inspector panel. So here's our inspector panel right here. Don't get overwhelmed. This is essentially the effects controls panel equivalent that Premiere offers, but we're in Resolve, baby, because we want to be. Screw you, Adobe, and your stupid ass subscriptions. So just for right now, forget about audio. Let's just focus on video. So put that in your brain. We're just going to worry about video right now. So let's say we want to reframe this clip right here. All you do is click on the video, and if you want to unlink it, hit Command L. That was another shortcut that I made sure to set up for myself, or you can relink by hitting Command L. So I clicked on my video here, and now you can see I have my zoom controls right here. I don't really use this Y axis one at all, I just use the X one. So let's say I wanna zoom in to 1.9, and then I want to adjust it. So you use the position ones just like Premiere, to adjust your framing. You can see that I'm in a different aspect ratio here than the normal 16 by nine. You can change all of that by hitting your settings down here. This is very similar to Premiere where this is just all of your project settings. So if you need to change any of the, the stuff that you wanna tweak like the aspect ratio or the frame rate or where your proxies get stored, that's all right here in the project settings menu. You can also rotate, you know, do your, <laughs> your pitching and your yaw yaws. That looks just about perfect. We're gonna rock with this for a while. So now let's say we want the clip to start out looking like this, you know, like looking like an absolute Chad, but then we want it to kind of go back to normal over a period of time. So like maybe zoom out and then change everything. So we got a keyframe and this is just like Premiere. So we're at the start of our playhead here. We're gonna click this keyframe button by zoom. And then I guess we'll do position and the pitch as well, even though the chattiness is looking real good. So we have our keyframe started, and we're gonna go to the end of the clip, and this is where you can make your changes. So this is how we want the clip to end. So I'm going to adjust that position. Maybe we just want it to be like this at the end of the clip, just to make it look professional. And then let's see our results. Oh, look, it's keyframed, it's working, wow. Now what's cool about Resolve is they have a bunch of built-in effects. Even in the free version of DaVinci, you get a ton of cool effects. I'm using the paid version, which is $300 once. Frick you Adobe subscriptions, am I right guys? Come on, yeah, no more subscriptions, dude. If you have the paid version, you get access to all of their really nice fusion effects. Like, I think they have a camera shake effect that's pretty good. So I'm gonna cut this clip here. I want this clip right here to shake. So I'm gonna just drag this on. Let's just see what it does. That looks pretty cool, like right off the bat. So I would encourage you to just go explore through all of Resolve's built-in effects because they have like a ton of stuff and some of it's really good. Like this, waviness. Look how cool that looks. But if Resolve's built-in effects aren't cutting it for you, consider trying today's sponsor, Motion VFX. And don't skip this part because this is actually something that could be useful to your editing. I'm promoting this because I actually think it's really great. Motion VFX is basically just a platform that has a ton of different built-in effects plugins for your video editing system, like Resolve or Final Cut and Premiere as well, if you're watching this video and 
for some reason not gonna use DaVinci, you can also use the plugins for those other programs. Let's look at the MKBHD set of plugins. He's a huge inspiration to me on YouTube and he has his own effects that you can download for Resolve. One of the things Marquez does a lot in his videos is a nice smooth zoom. So there's this MKBHD zoom continuous effect and you can just plop this right onto your clip and it will just automatically apply this nice smooth zoom to your video in one click, which is so nice. There's also a split screen effect that's super nice, so you don't have to manually adjust where your footage is. You can just put that on there, and then let's say I wanna put another clip on here, I drop the split screen on this as well, and then go to my effects, and then I would just click flip side, and then it would just add it to the right side. So if you're doing like a collaboration with someone, or you're talking about a product, and you wanna have your face and the product on screen at the same time, that's like two or three clicks, and you have this really clean looking setup for your video. So there's another pack that I think is gonna be really useful for me personally and maybe any of you out there making content on the web. It's called MTuber 3 and there's these nice little presets where you can make your screen go to a corner to make it look like a video call or something. So you can just grab one of these, plop it on, and it just automatically makes a nice looking little cutout, which is actually what I'm doing for this whole tutorial. Holy cow, it's all connected. It's the multiverse. So if you wanna support me and support this channel, please go to the link in the description and check out Motion VFX. Let's show Motion VFX why they should keep working with me on YouTube videos, because I think they're a really cool company offering amazing plugins for creators like us. So why wouldn't we want that? Just go browse, check it out, let me know what you think, and let's keep going with the edit. Okay, now it's time to talk about possibly my favorite part of editing videos, sound design. So there is a entire custom suite tab dedicated to sound design in Resolve called Fairlight, and we won't be using it today. Maybe in another video, but honestly, I do all of my sound stuff right within the edit tab. Once in a while, I've had the issue where I can't see my audio waveforms, which is frustrating as you can imagine for many reasons. This is another time where you wanna go into your timeline view options and make sure you toggle these settings. So you can turn on the audio waveforms here, and then down here you can view the audio waveforms in different ways. So let's say we wanna just plop on a sound effect right here. So we're gonna hit tab to open up our media pool and then go to our SFX here, and look at that. We got a beautiful little fart boom. Let's go ahead and play that back. What does my life become? All we do to pull this in is you can grab the whole thing like this and just drag it into our timeline down here. So this brings me to a point of sadness because I actually missed something about Premiere. I used to have G set to gain. I loved slapping G and then the gain would pop up and I would type in how many decibels I would want it to turn it up or down, hit enter, and there it was. That was my volume. I can't figure out how to get it to be the same in DaVinci. So what you have to do is you know click on your sound effect and then in the inspector here, make sure that's open, you have this volume control. So it's not quite as fast, but you just click on your sound effect. You can just dial this up like that or you know, type in the number you want and hit enter and then it will set it for you. Or let's say you have a music track in your edit and you want to maybe gradually turn it down or up, whatever you wanna do with the volume. All you do is click on your music track here and then you can just keyframe the volume just like Premiere so you can hit a keyframe here let it play or drag your playhead, and then you can either you know adjust it and it will keyframe it that way, or you can manually go through and grab this keyframe and like do micro adjustments. So either way works really well. One thing I like about Resolve is that at the end of an audio file, you can just drag this, which is actually very similar to Final Cut, because I spent two weeks in Final Cut and that was like the only thing I liked. So you can drag a fade out like this and then use this little guy to adjust the way it kind of dips down and falls off. So you can make it really subtle, really smooth between your audio transitions. Another thing similar to Premiere is like if you have two pieces of audio next to each other, let's just zoom in a little bit, you can right click at the bridge between two and you can add crossfades. So if you want to smoothly transition between two things, you can do that. Once you add it, you can also customize it like this. Also, if you hold down your shift key and use your scroll wheel, you can make your audio waveforms bigger. And then if you have your mouse up here in the video section, it will make that bigger. You can also go to your timeline view options again and you know drag your video down and up like this or your audio like that. But I think it's easier to just use shift and scroll. It's pretty fast. So if you wanna see the audio levels while you're editing your sound, you can just click on your mixer here and then you'll see your levels playing back. That's good so you don't blow out your viewers' ear sockets. Quick editor's note, I forgot to mention this while recording, but if you wanna sync audio really fast and really accurately, all you do is click on the video file you wanna sync and the audio file at the same time holding down command, then right click 
and then click auto sync audio. And then I usually just do it by waveform and I've never had it make a mistake. I'm not syncing tons of files at once, but that's how I sync and it works every time. And then briefly, we're gonna talk about adding effects to your audios. I'm gonna kind of glance over this and if you want me to go into it more in depth later, I can make more vids. Let's say we want to add something to make our voice sound good. Usually I use a limiter, a compressor, and an EQ. So we just have this, this naked audio right here. All you do to add effects is, you know, go in here, click on audio effects, and then grab your limiter. I'm just gonna set this to negative six right off the bat because that's what I do with my voices. And then another great plugin in here is Vocal Channel. Honestly, you can get away with dialing in all of your audio for your voices and stuff with those two plugins. So I usually use a compressor to get the gain. You can set your EQ in here or in the inspector in the audio settings, you can also just set up an EQ right in there as well. Now let's change our EQ and do something really professional like that. And now let's say you wanna paste those settings onto another clip. It's just like Premiere. Click on the clip, hit Command C, and then go to another clip hit option V, and then you can click on your audio attributes, which is so like Premiere, which makes me feel so good. Then you apply them, and then now these two clips have the exact same settings. You can also do that with your videos. Now, if you don't wanna add audio effects to just specific individual files and then paste them to everything, you can go into Fairlight, and then within Audio One, you can add your effects to the track itself. So you could, this is where you could add your limiter or your EQ. So you could just add an EQ to this track, adjust it how you want it, and then that will go across any file that touches the audio one track. If you do that, you need to make sure your tracks are very organized. This is what I do for YouTube videos. I just set audio one as like my voice, and then audio two would be music, audio three and four would be sound effects, and then you can just add effects to those channels, and then just do micro adjustments with the inspector. If you want me to go more in depth on that, I can in a future video, let me know. But you can also do everything in the edit tab if you want. That's what's cool about Resolve is there's so many options you can kind of build your own workflow, but it's fun to just experiment and find out what's most efficient because I'm a freak for that stuff. Oh, I'm getting tired, dude. I've been filming this tutorial for so long, but now we're talking about color grading. Let's say your edit is locked, your sound, your music, your visuals, everything's locked. Now it's time to color grade. So what we do is click on the color tab. So this clip is totally raw. There's nothing on it, no LUTs or anything. Let's go right here where everything's in focus. So you can use this to scrub just through that clip, which is nice. So you can see there's nothing happening over here. So we're just gonna add three nodes by right clicking and hitting add node corrector. So we're gonna do that three times. Maybe there's a faster way to do it, but I don't know. And then you're gonna play a little fun game where you connect the green lines to these arrows. Another editor's note, I realized that while I was recording my screen, I had deleted all my nodes for this example, but when you just click on a clip and then go to the color page, there's already one node in there. All you gotta do is right click to create your two other corrector nodes, and then you can just click and drag those onto the little line that connects the arrows and that's all you have to do. You don't have to manually connect them every time. We're forgetting about adjustment layers. That Those are a thing of the past now, so I'm sorry, but you gotta let go. This actually, I prefer this over adjustment layers. It just takes a second to get used to, but honestly, within like a week, you can be able to do this very quickly. Adjustment layers go from the top to the bottom, so whatever happens on top affects what's beneath it. This is the same thing, but it's from left to right. So it's very similar in concept, but you're just using nodes instead of layers. This is our input and this is our output. So it's like the adjustment layers from top to bottom, but we're going left to right. Okay, good, take a drink. Also, if this is distracting to you, you can just hit clips up here to get rid of that. So we're gonna start by just making a simple correction, okay? And if these look different down here for you, don't worry, we're gonna get to that stuff. But just focus on this upper right section right here. We're gonna focus on this middle node first, okay? So click on that middle node and then click effects. And then to convert your footage from log to something that looks a little better, we're gonna look for color space transform. This is such a powerful tool. Drop it on that node. So I shoot all my footage with a Sony and S-Log3 with S Gamut 3 Cine, which is my input color space. So just scroll until you find your color space, S Gamut 3 Cine, and I am shooting an S-Log3. Where is that? S-Log3. So just do that according to what camera you're using. Okay, you're, you're great, you're doing fine. Now our output color space. This is where I go Rec 709. Where are you, Recky? And then I set my output gamma to rec 709-A. So I'm gonna explain why. If you go into my 
color space transform settings. I have my timeline and output color space also set to 709-A, and I heard somebody explain that that's a good thing to do for people who are using Mac screens, Apple screens. That's why I have this set to 709-A and why I set the output gamma to 709-A. Because basically when I export this, it's gonna look exactly like this on YouTube. That's why I do it. Okay, so that's the only thing we need to do with this color space transform node. So we can turn off effects. This node is done. Now we're going to this one and this is the one where I make my corrections. So I click on this one and I first wanna have my parade set and then I wanna click on this guy here, the color wheels. And this is where we start to make our adjustments and corrections. Very first thing I do is just get the white balance to look correct. So basically I just look at my parade here and I adjust it using this to try to get the reds blues and greens all relatively equal so that the white balance is good. And I also just use my human eyeballs because I guess I can trust those once in a while. And then I change this to waveform and now I adjust my lift to make sure I'm not like destroying my shadows. And I'm just, you know, I'm eyeballing it. I'm not a perfectionist. Um, and then also messing with my gain. I just want to brighten it up a little bit so it's not super dark. In this node, I also do like contrast adjustments if I need to. That's way too much and then saturation if I need to as well. And then if you click on this and go to your vector scope, and you can also make sure your skin tone line is turned on, which is really nifty just by clicking this button here, then you can make sure your skin is like pretty accurate, which is cool. So if it's not accurate, we can just do some adjustments. And if you want to see what everything looks like without any nodes, you can hit option D and that turns off all your nodes, turn it back on, or command D will turn off an individual node, which is kind of nice. So that's what it looked like with just the color space transform. And then when we turn that on, this is our adjustments. It's already looking way better. And I feel like it's just way faster than Premiere as far as getting like good looking skin tones and stuff. For this example, I'm happy with that. And then the final thing I do is I add just a little, little bit of a baby LUT just to make it look nice at the end. So basically I go to this final node, which is our LUT node. I don't know if that's what you call it, but you can go down to your LUTs and this is where you can store your own LUTs or use the built-in ones, which is cool. I'm gonna use this teal orange one. Obviously it's very strong as you can see. So we need to dial that back. So all you do to dial it back is click on this little guy here, the key and then you go to your gain in your key output. And that's basically like Premiere's version of intensity when you're in Lumetri. So glad I'm not in Lumetri, but I usually do like start out with 0.2, see what that looks like. You can also just drag this to see how it looks, but I like it to be very subtle so it's not overwhelming. And then you can click Command D to see before and after. That's a nice little touch, you know, it's not a perfect grade, but that's before and that's after with all the nodes on it. I would be pretty pretty okay with that for a YouTube video. I might spend a little more time to get the skin a little better, but this is just like a really quick way to grade. So if we click on this clips icon again, it brings up all of our clips. This is just all of our footage laid out in an orderly fashion, which might be confusing at first coming from a Premiere user, but it's really great actually. So if I wanna paste this onto like these two clips here, basically hold down command and select these two and then right click on the original shot and hit apply grade. And now it applies it to both of these as well. So if all of your shots are like in a similar location or similar lighting, you can just apply the grade to as many shots that are similar. Then you can go through and make adjustments on this node on the left here to get everything balanced. I hope that makes sense. It might seem like a lot, you know, clicking on these individual clips and adding nodes. But once you start learning how to like get a basic grade and then apply it to all the similar shots and just do those adjustments, I don't know. I think it's similar to just going through an adjustment layer chopping the adjustment layer and adjusting each clip. It's very similar, but I prefer this and I just feel like I get better colors out of Resolve. That's what this thing was built for. It was like Hollywood color grading. I feel like Premiere, you're just using duct tape and glue to try to make things look good. This is like driving a freaking Lambo, baby. It's so good. Okay, so your video is done. Now you just click on your deliver tab over here. So we're gonna name this Epic Cheeks. <laughs> That's not how you spell cheeks, don't care. And you can browse where you want this bad boy to land. And then here's where you control your export settings. So you can select your different formats. You know, I usually do QuickTime H.264. 
I have my two to one aspect ratio already set up in my timeline settings. 23.976 is what I shoot in, so it's what I export in. And then you can change your encoding profile. You know, I usually do high, but I don't know what it does, but I do that because it says high, and I think that's nice. I want my color space tag and gamma tag to be the same as project because I already set that up as Rec 709A. Then you can also set up your audio settings here. This is the settings I usually use. And then you just add this to your render queue, and then all you do is hit render all, and it exports so much faster than Premiere. It's hilarious and it's beautiful. The best part about the exporting of DaVinci files is you don't have to use that stupid gamma compensation LUT anymore to get your colors to be how they look in Premiere, to be how they look like in QuickTime or on YouTube. It just, it just works how it's supposed to. The one thing I will say is that I would make sure to run your own export test because I'm not an expert in this kind of a thing. So shoot some footage, just grade a clip, and then experiment with like your timeline color management settings that we talked about, and then also those export color settings or the ones in your nodes, um, just to make sure that it's turning out how you created it to be and it's not getting, I don't know, shifted by weird settings or anything. And if I learn more, I will make another video. So go check out Motion VFX in the description. Join our free Discord server called the Mayfam. It's awesome. Subscribe on the tubes of you. And please, for the love of God, text me when you get home so I know you're safe. I've been worried about you and I'm hoping you're doing all right. Okay. I love you so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.